tonight we'll be again in the fifth chapter of Ephesians. This will be our 65th lesson here. We're going to be in verses 14 through 16. Now, Paul has just finished expounding to the brethren the necessity of being a of not being identified to the ungodly. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Now he's serious. He, he's serious about this. Yeah. Nobody can come up with a reason to fellowship with him. Right. And if they do, well, God's going to judge them for leading God's people astray. You don't save people by becoming identified with them. And people who think you do are just wrong. That's all there is to it. You don't want to argue about it, particularly with me. You want to argue about this. It's the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation, not your influence. Amen. Don't think for one minute that you being friendly adds anything at all to the gospel. If you don't deliver the gospel, you are impotent as the day is long, and no word you say will be effective. Amen. That's the way it is. So that's, why, that's why I said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove or expose them. The fact that you're around should assist in making clear people that are living wrong. By contrast, by your word, by your action, it should become apparent so and so is wrong. They're living the wrong way. Now that's the thing that he has just finished expounding under the Ephesians. And now he's going to turn to the matter of your activity and wisdom and vigilance. In other words, you're not an island. You're in the middle of a situation that's very challenging. There's works of darkness and people of darkness all around you. And you've got to learn to live wisely. Amen. The salvation of God is going to affirm cannot be accomplished in an atmosphere of dullness. As soon as people become dull of hearing and they can't see, the work of God shuts down. That's the way it is. We all are evidence of this in the past. I mean, this shouldn't require an extensive discussion. Where there's foolish conduct and dullness of understanding, whatever people say, the Holy Spirit's not working in that atmosphere. You say, what about conviction of sin? Well, that's because people sobered up and heard the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't convict people of sin through foolish conduct mm -hmm. and things of this sort. Uh -huh. And we're going to find that there's opportunity for the devil to work all around us. We're to shut those opportunities down as much as possible. And to give people and give God an environment and an opportunity to work, so to speak. Now, this all seems simple to say, but <laughs> the church at large has had a great deal of difficulty with this from, from pretty early on, of coordinating life with godliness. It's, it's just been a very difficult thing for people. They've been sufficient to talk about godliness, but living godly, that's... that's something else. Now he's going to say there must be an opportunity provided for God to work. That's going to be the point. Now at this point, <coughs> where there wasn't given an opportunity for God to work, this is what gave rise to the, of Babylon the Great, which is Satan's emulation of the church. And it's crafty enough that if you're not in the spirit, like you can't identify it. It looks like the real thing. And people assume it's the real thing. If they look right at it and they know it's not bearing fruit and they, they just can't see it clear. 
That's because that there's been an atmosphere that is not conducive to divine working. And when you're in that kind of atmosphere, just things become very difficult to discern. And you can have a role in correcting that situation. Now this perspective of that's being taught in our day, there's a, see, there's a misconception of God in the land. Amen. There's a misconception of Christ in the land. There's a misconception of the gospel in the land. See, now this is true. I'm not just saying this to be, to be complaining. Yeah. This is the way it is. And it's affected like how people translate the Bible. It's affected that. It's affected how people preach. It's affected how people do missions. It's affected how people live. This is why the church is inordinately weak. Everybody knows this. I mean, we're not saying something that nobody doesn't know, that no one knows. Everyone knows this is the case, but we're trying to pinpoint why it's this way. If the strength of professing Christians appears weak, <laughs> you must know that part of its weakness is the church environment itself. Paul's writing to the church. He's not, he's not writing to the city council at Ephesus. <laughs> he's not writing to the government fathers at Ephesus, the officials of the town. He's writing to the church. And the lack of discernment in the church, whether it's Ephesus or here, it's almost impossible to calculate how serious it is. Yeah. It affects the way people live, it affects the way they raise their kids, it affects the way the colleges train their preachers, it affects everything, Amen. see? So we talk about these things, this is just not talking about private life. This is talking about the corporate life of the church. The church is a city set on a hill. You are not a city. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. You're part of a city Amen. that's set on a hill. <coughs> now no one can expose works of darkness who is not in the light and who does not have light. <coughs> now with that in mind, <coughs> here's our text. Wherefore he saith, he, I say, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. <laughs> Ooh, what do you suppose he'd say today? What kind of letter do you suppose Paul would write today? Well, it'd be the same kind of letter, it'd just be elaborated a little further, but it'd basically be the same kind of letter. The fact that you don't know many, uh, the fact that you don't know many people who know this condition exists and are able to do something about it tells you the kind of age you're living in. Now you'll be hard pressed to know it to, for people who know this is the case and have some kind of solution can effectively address it. These are, <laughs> these are hard people to find. Thank God Paul was one of them. Wrote it down. <clears throat> Alright, let's look at this text. Wherefore, yeah, well, that's, that's another one of those reasoning words. This shows spiritual logic. Wherefore, therefore, because, for, furthermore. See, these are all having to do with a manner of reasoning that a person has. <clears throat> wherefore. Some versions say, therefore. That's, that is, in view of what I just said. Then he says something else. Or for this reason. New American Standard Bible says, for this reason, uh, he saith. 
Now it says, this is why, you know, if he says, this is why, he saith. The Williams translation says, translation says, so it is so, in view of what was said previously, so it said. The contemporary English version says, just as the scriptures say, and the literal interpretation of the version says, and because of this. So again, this is a point of reasoning. I want to emphasize this. It's a point of reasoning. You've got to, you've got to read, be able to read a scriptural statement and then proceed in your thinking with that statement in mind. Yeah. That's the point we're seeing here. <clears throat> it's following the statement he's going to make is made in view of what this statement, whatsoever doth make manifest in li is light. All right, now in view of that, that's what it's Therefore, in view of that, whatever makes manifest is light. In view of that, here's what I'm going to say. I, I know that, that seems kind of simplistic, but if a person's not disciplined in thought, this isn't the way they think. They hear a sentence, they truncate it, they chop it off and throw it away, and and see, we're living in a society that is teaching people to think this way. All of your entertainment media, all of it, is all calculated to teach you to think in bits and pieces. Not to have an extended thought. Most of the literature is written this way. Short, choppy sentences that are not related. And it's teaching people not to think in an extended manner which means they never really come to a conclusion. See? They never really arrive at a reason to do this or that. Because they're short to thought to think these short little thoughts. And I think I think preachers should absolutely refuse to succumb to that pressure. They should just not do it. Say, we're not going to have short homilies. We're not going to have short sentences. We're not going to have little bitty illustrations. We're just not going to do it. You're going to have to be able to track with a thought. That's in Scripture. Without having little points of illustration sandwiched in between. This is for babies. This is not for adults. Little illustrations and aphorisms sandwiched in between. You notice this stuff isn't in the scripture. Yeah. And if they do bring up some sort of a illustration, it's from the scripture mm -hmm. yeah. that they bring it up. Yeah. All that's in this word, wherefore. In view of the fact that that which makes manifest is light, in view of that, here's the word, awake! Yeah. <laughs> Now you'd think that in view of that you'd say, watch <laughs> or see. <laughs> Wouldn't you? You'd think that that's what you'd say, but no, he says, awake. Another version would say, wake up. Another says, be awake. That means wake up and stay awake. Another says, get up or rise or arouse thyself. Well, I give you the lexical meaning of awake. It's, it's kind of interesting to arouse, like shaken. Yeah. Wake up! Uh -huh. some, some preacher's got to be a shake. Yeah. Wake up! Mm -hmm. Now you've had you have children. You you know some children are hard to wake up. You can't say I say under the get up. You know it isn't that way. Yeah. It takes some violent action sometimes to get people up. Yeah. If you'll just observe what he said before, seriously, a, it'll, it comes with the power to do this well, thing. Amen. Amen. Oh, wait, here's the meaning to arouse, to cause to rise, to, to cause to rise, to arouse from sleep, to awake, to arouse from sleep of death, to recall the dead to life, to cause to rise from a seat or bed. See, it's a, it's a strong word. Awake! It's like a trumpet blast. I imagine that's probably the word that the Lord will use when he raises the dead. Awake! Why not dead rise, both righteous and otherwise. The point is, if light is what makes manifest, 
The saints are to be shining lights, and to be that, you have to be awake. Amen. You can't shine while you're asleep. Not in the kingdom of God. The lack of heavenly luster can't be excused. Mm -hmm. If a person is not emitting light, producing conviction, whetting a desire for the things of God, if this isn't happening, the person's asleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's time to wake up. If light does not make manifest, it's because the saints aren't shining. That's the way it is. Now, sometimes when the saints shine, it causes persecution, you know, and a reaction, but it causes something. Something happens. Wake thou that sleepest. In other words, this is the person who spiritually is unconscious. Spiritually, they're unconscious. They really don't know what's going on, they can't see what's going on, they don't hear what's going on. Things that may be really apparent to you, not apparent to them because they're asleep. Spiritually asleep. In the midst of a dark, dank prison of iniquity, they can thank God for the flowers. Think nothing about it. Oh yeah. I'm telling you the truth now. They can raise up a prayer in the midst of dark iniquity and say, we thank you for this beautiful day. Mm. Say, is that wrong? Oh, it's not wrong. It's just sleepy talk. What do you do when it rains? You thank God. God, we're not thankful because the day is so bad. Does anyone pray that? What I'm saying is there's signs of sleep all around us. Yeah. That people are asleep. They can't see what's not seen. All captured their vision is their outward environment and things that are seen. Awake thou that sleepest. They're oblivious to the activity of Satan. They don't, they don't see it. They're ignorant of the initiatives of darkness. They're taking place. There's inroads being made by darkness that they, they can't see it. And there's God working here and there, and they can't see that. Yeah. They're asleep. These sleepers, these are people that caused Paul to have concern, care for the churches. He knew what sleep induces. Yeah. Amen. And he knew what induces sleep. He knew there's a jeopardy in being asleep. Mm -hmm. Un unaware of what's going on in the spirit world. Yeah. Unaware of it. They just can't see it. Amen. Yeah, that's what we have experienced this last Wednesday. Now, I thought about this just this week. This was like an opportunity for anyone who had who was like dozing to see that God, God was <laughs> He was kind to us. That's right. See, he, he he inclined his ear yeah. and he heard our prayers. Yeah. And and before the meeting was over, he answered it. Now see this was this was a wake up call. All right, now you want to get serious for God now. He's, he, he's, he's inclined himself now. Now, perhaps there's more missions to be to enter into. Maybe right. there's, but you won't if you're asleep. Get sleepy You'll kids. pass your right That's by. That's right. Amen. You know, the psalmist, he knew about this sleep, about the, about the lethal nature of it. Psalm 13, 3. Here's, here's David. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Amen. What is the sleep of death? It's the sleep from which you cannot awaken. Yes, that's right. The sleep of death is a sleep you, you can't well, wake up. That's right. You're locked into the situation. Yeah. All right. Now, if a person is asleep, unaware, how do you know that person can wake up? Yeah. Huh? How, how do you know? The only way you know is the issue this town is awake, you know, and whoever can will, whoever can't, can't won't. Yeah, right. That's how it works. So, I, we, we can't identify this scholastically. He's asleep. He's a, this isn't the way. The call has got to come wake up. Yeah. Amen. Be alert. Mm -hmm. Watch one on the wall. Say, the enemy is approaching. Wake up. One penny costs something, God is doing something, wake up! Yeah. 
This is what you see and happen here. This is God's doing this. This is for this is the words Joel said and come wake up. Wake up and connect what you're seeing with what Joel said. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's what Brother Robert's talking about here. Wake up. I pondered the sleep of death. This is uh well I can pray that prayer. You can too, can't you? You you, you can pray that heartily. Say, Lord, don't let me sleep the sleep of death. Rise from the dead. I talk, he's talking to Christian people. Rise from the dead. See that we go out here. There's a place for the dead. There's a cemetery down here on Maiden Lane. It's a place for the dead. There's places in the world that are spiritual places that are places for the dead. And sometimes people are walking around living in those places. But they got to get out of that. Rise from the dead. Get out of the region of the dead. Whatever it takes, do it. Get out of the region of the dead. Because God's not working in there. That's why, that's why it's a region of death. Because God's not working in there. He's not working in there. Now we all were initially dead in trespasses and sins. And God quickened us. You were dead in trespasses and sins. He had quickened then he has, by grace you're saved. He quickened you. But if you lapse back in that state, you have to rise from the dead. Oh, he'll, I know that he'll enable you. That, but you're the one who has to exert. You're going to have to exert the effort to get up. Amen. If you're an impotent man and you've been lame for 38 years and Jesus says, get up, you got to get up. Amen. The only way you'll know who you can is to put out some effort to do it. And when you do it, he'll raise you up. Amen. Rise from the dead. See, dead, that's the environment in which unbelief, you can see this, can't you? This is the environment where unbelief is nourished. To rise from the dead, that's another way of saying quit quit dwelling in a state of unbelief. What will happen, Lord? What will happen if I rise from the dead? Christ will give you light. You can't get it otherwise. Some other versions read, Christ will shine on you. Or Christ will be your light. Now it's imperative that you get into the light. You've got to get into a, an area that's lit up and you yourself have to be lit up. The psalmist said, the Lord will light my candle. Elsewhere it says, the psalmist said, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And the Lord will light your, so your life will count for something. You'll be a luminary. They can show people the way. I may never do more and say, he's a nice person. Yeah, that's, that's, we're glad for that, but that, and it has to go further than that. It has to go, I'm going to follow that person. When you are a luminary, or you are lit up, people can actually follow you. I've heard people say, don't follow me. Oh, don't, what do you mean don't follow me? Paul said, be followers of me, as I also am a Christ. You want to live so people can follow you. That's the point of being a light. He says that leaders in the church whose faith follow. Yeah, see? Right. Christ, Christ will enable you to be that kind of person. Yes, amen. Someone can follow. They don't know how to live. They can watch how you live and follow it. Yeah, right. And at least it will get them into the get them into the light, see? Yeah. Christ to give you light. <clears throat> yes? You want to live your life so that when a person says, don't follow me, you say, okay, follow me. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Some, pe some people, some previous believers may have seared their conscience in yeah. certain areas. Yeah. And so they, they are not offended by sin like they should. But they can see in others there that they're are. offended by I should be offended that's too. Right. And so in. they follow them. Amen. You became followers of the other churches. He says to the, was the, to the Thessalonians, they followed the other believers yeah. that they saw. They followed them. Yeah. Did what they did. Amen. 
Now the, the light of Jesus is, comes through his face. The hinder parts are not. <laughs> well, Jesus is surrounded by glory, but the, the light that we're talking about comes from his face. Face to face. All right. Now it's found in these words in 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It's called the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. So think of it this way. As you concentrate on Jesus, that would be like looking into his face, then light from him passes to you. That's how it works. So the more you're absorbed with Jesus, see, the more you become a luminary. You become a, a source of your secondary, it's reflective light, like the moon. You become reflective light. As the light passes from Jesus to you, it bounces off, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yes. It, it, it's reflected to other people so they can see portions of Christ in you. They don't see the fullness. You don't see the fullness until you see his face, but you see enough to get get the attention of the person. There's no way to overstate, see, the seriousness of spiritual sleep. If you're asleep, you don't get this. Awake out of sleepest, rise from the dead, Christ will give you light. That's a brief but a wonderful promise, isn't it? Now in view of that, he, he proceeds. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise. See then, he is another, see, here's this extended word about reasoning in view of what I just said there in view of that then this follows here like when you when you plant a, a seed a corn of wheat a sweet seed you there's a certain process that happens first the blade then the ear then the full grown corn in the ear. See, it's, a, it's a process that. All right, he's talking about the process now in this. Before we were talking about, let's get some light. That's the, it's the light of life we're talking about. Let's get, let's get alive where we can do something first. Now, now this, now this, see, here we're going to talk about the blade in the ear and the full grown corn in the ear. See, see then. Now the word see, it's a, it's a strong word, but it's, it's a. In a sense, this kind of stuff is boring, but if you, if you can think about it, it would be kind of helpful. The word means to see, to discern. Yeah. See, well, I can see now without my glasses, but before I had my glasses, I mean, I wouldn't exactly call this seeing. Yeah. Uh -huh. I couldn't read anything over there. I couldn't recognize anyone out there. So seeing, we need to add another word there, so it, it discern. Yeah. <laughs> Now I don't just see some people, I see that's Jeremy. Yeah, uh -huh. I discern. Amen. To be possessed of sight, have the power of seeing, that speaks of the capacity, to discover by use. Well, how do you know you see? Well, look around. It's like, when you look around, then you can tell if you can see or <laughs> If you can see or not, you look around. You come into the things of God, you look around and say, well, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Yeah, you got a seeing problem, see? Got a seeing problem. If it doesn't make sense to be godly, we got a sight problem here. If we have a sight problem, we got a light problem. Yeah, sure. If we got a light problem, we got a sleep problem. Yeah. And if we got a sleep problem, we got this problem of not being able to expose the works of darkness. See, so it all follows right along here. In view of the fact that light makes manifest and in consideration that Christ will give us light if we wake up, the following is something to be discerned. But we're going to say now, this has to be discerned. And he's not going to use little baby words. I hate baby words. Some nutcase wrote a book I learned all there is to learn in kindergarten. Well, if the guy was stupid, that's a lie to begin with. It's a lot of stuff I didn't learn in kindergarten, and you didn't either. I think I know what he meant, but that's what that what bothers me is I do know what he meant. 
You want words and sentences and preaching that challenges your mind. It's a valuable resource you got there, your mind. We want to be able now to walk in the light of the Lord. You get light, you want to be able to walk in the light. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light. Me? So that's what we're going to say. What do you do? Well, walk circumspectly. <laughs> Some other versions say, how you walk. Walk circumspectly. How you walk. How you live. How you are living. How you conduct your life. Very, be very careful about the sort of lives you live. Know exactly how you walk and live purposefully and worthily and accurately. Well, there's, there's a lot of truth in that, but it's, I'm not satisfied with that kind of explanation. I'd rather be, I'd rather want, I want to know what this means, and then I can make the application myself. The word circumspectly, or circumspection, means exactly, accurately, and diligently. That's a lexical definition. Here's another one. Characterized by exactness and thoroughness. Accurately and with care. Pertain to strict conformity to a norm or standard involving both detail and completeness. Those are all <coughs> lexical definitions of the Greek word translated circumspectly. Precisely. No rough edges. Within the boundary of validity. A certain kind of life that's valid. You gotta stay in that within the circumference of what God describes as valid life. Amen. That's gonna take diligence now to do that. Because there's a part of you that doesn't like to do this wants to wander beyond the border. Yeah. Uh -huh. You've, everybody's got this. The law of sin said my members. It just wants to go circumspectly. Be done. Oh, I'm not going to let you live out there. He says there's nothing wrong with it, oh, but it tends to dull my senses, and that makes it wrong. Yeah. No, there may not be a commandment against it, but I find myself getting spiritually stupid when I'm there. Yeah. Yeah, right. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. It's easier to forget. Uh -huh. Amen. Even though the, the activity may appear legitimate. Yes, Sister June. It may not be a commandment against that activity, but there is a commandment against what it produces. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. In those choosing to live after the flesh, walking circumspectly is too narrow. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's too narrow. Too hard. But see, the way we're called to walk in is narrow. Amen. There's not enough room for flesh to get in there. Mm -hmm. If flesh starts to grow out, you can't, you get stuck. You can't, you can't move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the walls aren't going to give. Yeah. At all. See? Right. Sir, right to you. Lose some weight, brother. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Amen. Circumspectly, see, it's, you know this, and so you keep yourself spiritually trimmed so you can stay on the way. Yes? Also, the more light that is shed and the more understanding you gain, the more of this is going to have to continue to narrow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. Right. It gets more and more narrow until finally at the end there's nothing that the flesh can get through at all. Yeah. Not even your body, yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's one of the few places cleansing is not associated with confession or forgiveness. Or for confession. Huh? That's what he says. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. That's not like adultery sin. Yeah. That's this propensity. These things that you would to God that didn't come in, but they do. 
It's like washing the feet. He keeps you, keeps you clean. If you walk in the light, he'll keep you clean. Brother, Amen. he will. He'll keep you clean. Amen. If you worry about retrogression and it concerns you about any kind of backward movement, walk in the light and he'll keep, he'll keep you clean. Yes. And you'll be able to maintain that walk. He'll, he'll teach you to walk circumspectly or very precisely, very correctly. It's exact because it deals with why we live and for whom we live and that for which we're preparing. This changes how you live. When Jesus made you alive, it was not so you could do your will. It was so you could do his will. It was not so you could live for self and plan for self. It was to live unto him who died for you and rose again. That's why. This is walking in newness of life. That's what this is. Walking circumspectly is walking in newness of life. Walking circumspectly is not walking after the flesh and walking by faith and not by sight. That's what it is. Now, such a life is, uh, as I say, characterized by exactness. Now, the truth of the matter is, and it's sad to say this, but it is true, that too many professing Christians are living sloppy lives that are not characterized by circumspection. Well, it's the kind of thing you can't exactly put your finger on. You don't want to get in their face and shout about it. It's not that kind of thing, but you can see it. I can see it. I know what, a, a little bit of what Paul meant when he said the care of all the churches. I, in my own measure, I, I think I know what he, you see people and you can tell, they be, ah, they made the wrong, they made the wrong choice, they're going the wrong way, they're, it's, not, it's not really, really bad iniquity, but it's going to lead to it if they don't get straightened up. They're not walking circumspectly. Every day, you have to make who knows how many decisions, 2,000, 3,000, maybe 4,000, 5,000, I would say. Yes or no decisions you gotta make. Every day, I'm gonna look, I'm not gonna look. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say. I would say you probably at least, at least probably 5,000 points of the day at which you go left or right. What's exactness? It's always going the right. And the more public figure you are, and the more you're in the public, or the more people you're around, or the more of these kind of decisions you have to make. See? Now exactness has to do with always making the right choice. Making a choice where Jesus stays with you, the Spirit stays with you, illumination stays with you, spiritual vision stays with you. But you'll be able to sense this. Now, if you're a sensitive soul, you'll be able to sense some. There are some people when you're around them, the things of God are harder to see. You got to make a decision now about that. Yeah. You you got to do it. Yeah. See, you're the one that makes your life exact and precise. Mm -hmm. You're the one that does that. You no one else can do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus isn't going to force you into into a mold, so to speak. He's going to call you to follow him. And to walk in the light, and he says, now walk circumspectly, be alert, be alert. You've got to be alert to walk circumspectly. Yeah. Be alert, it connect is. your life with me. Yeah, it is a straight and narrow way. Straight and narrow way. Uh -huh. See, you connect your life with me. Everything you are t tempted to do or drawn to do by the Spirit, everything has to do some way with God. Yeah. Uh -huh. It has something to do with Him. This word makes me think of this doesn't have anything to do with the dictionary and so forth. It just makes me think of these other two words of circumference and inspection. Yeah, and what's are, looking at right. what's around you. That's right. Attention. That's involved. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's involved. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, you've got uh, you've got to be exact because you hold a treasure in an earthen vessel. All right, that means I got to be I got to be more precise here how I live because I'm holding this tre I got a treasure but <laughs> it's in an earthen vessel that, that changes things now I got to be exact in the way I live so 
well, circumspectly also carries the idea of living intentionally. Yeah. yeah intentionally, that's you right. You are endeavoring. Yeah. Like Paul right. talked about running so that you may yeah. obtain. So if you're not careful, your life isn't being driven by by, God, by the objective of the Lord. Yeah. You just kind of go on like a cruise control. And it's on those occasions where men tend to drift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you have the influence of the flesh that's always with you and the wicked one who's in the world. It's If you're not endeavoring to press and to fight, evidently you're just going to fall back as a result. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, uh, this type of living requires an extraordinary amount of effort and discipline. Let me give you a, a kind of a personal illustration. Let's say you're a, you're a young person, but you're of, you're of age. You can you can think and you can reason. Or you're a grown up, and you go to a fellowship, and you doze off all the time. Or let's say while someone's preaching, you're reading something else. What is that? That you're not exact enough. You're not exact. Enough. We're assuming that what's said is is true and this sort of thing. You understand? So exact exactness. It sometimes people have actually been exposed to truth they needed to hear that could have helped them in a crisis they meant, yeah. but when it was being said, they were going to the bathroom. Well, I don't think we should say something like that. Well, I do. Amen. Or they were reading. Mm -hmm. Or they were talking. Now, this again, this is something you got to work. I got my own trouble <laughs> in this area. But I know that I've got to make myself pay attention. Yes, amen. Particularly amen. if something about yeah. something pertaining to life and godliness is under discussion. Of course, in the day we're living in, we'd have to add, or maybe they're texting, yeah. or maybe they're responding on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, all this stuff is real. Oh, it's yeah. all things that are in our life yeah. that if we're not very careful, they will, what it does is it extracts the exactness that's from right. our lives. See, if, if that's true when you're in, in the assembly, what about when you're at work? Yeah. Or when you're at the store? Mm -hmm. should, see, it... it it covers every facet of life, and if you're if you're not alert here, I don't know how you could be alert there. Yeah, that's right. Live exact alert lives. Do you know how many times the Lord, when He would speak, He'd tell the people here, hear what yeah. did He tell them? And he'd call them to listen. Yeah, that's right. Hear what I say. See, there's a, there's a devil that's trying to make encroachments into your life. There's the world that's calling out to you to come to it. There's a law of sin in your members that wants attention. There's the old man that wants to come off the cross. How can any person prepare without, for glory without being consistent and exact, being circumspect, walking, means living. See, life is referred to as a walk because it's a, it's a progression. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sister Barb. Yeah, I was considering this, that um, as we live in the world, there's a lot of pressure put on us from every side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this living circumspectly will enable us to see the way of escape at mm -hmm. every temptation, every opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, as getting this mental picture of something that has a lot of pressure from all sides, save one side, that's the way of escape. When yeah. the pressure comes and the way of escape is where it's going to escape the pressure, if you don't recognize that way of escape, yeah. then there's more temptation that you're going to conform mm -hmm. to Amen. the pressure that's being placed upon Amen. you. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Walk circumspectly, not as fools. Oh, yes, Brother Jonathan. I appreciate you speaking about keeping yourself alert in times when the truth is being spoken. Yeah. I instantly thought about what Paul said when he said, to keep, I keep under my body. Because there's sometimes when I'm sitting here and the body wants to sleep and I have to just make it stay awake. Mm -hmm. Or it says, I need to go do this. I'm just like, I need to stay here. There's sometimes where I have to fight 
yeah. to keep myself alert, but I'm not going to do that unless I'm aware of what's going on around me. Yes. Yeah. These are these are common battles that that we have. What what we're doing is calling people to alertness to this fact, so they can address it themselves. We Amen. we can't uh, impose one another's judgment on each other. I mean, that, <laughs> that's out of order. But we encourage one another because we we have to do the same thing. Right. Not as fools, unwise men. The word fools means without wisdom. <clears throat> you might say it's like a spiritual idiot. The spiritual imbecile. And we've got refined words that dull it like retarded. We you got see, there's words that people use to kind of retard the effect because we don't want to malign people that do not have a gift of normal intelligence. We don't want to malign people like that. And, and the scripture, of course, would never, he's not talking about that kind of people. He's talking about people that could be wise. They, when they come in Christ, they had the capacity. Christ has made them wisdom. They had the capacity to be wise, but they chose to be unwise. Yeah, that's right. See, a person who's unlearned in the kingdom of God over an extended period has chosen mm -hmm. yes. to remain unlearned. <clears throat> They've chosen to be remain unwise. All of us started out unwise mm -hmm. to some to some degree. We did know enough to call on the name of the Lord, say out of sin, this sort of thing. But we're not talking about those kind of people here. We're talking about people who lapse back into an unwise state. Not as fools as people that don't. They can't live exactly because they don't know how. See, they don't know how to conduct their lives in a circumspect manner. Because they can't see the issues. They can't see the enemy. They can't see the blessing come. They can't sense the Holy Spirit calling. They can't sense the flesh calling. They just, they're unwise. Don't walk like that. People who are unwise have not been doing a lot of thinking about they're going to die. They're going to appear before God. They're going to be judged. See, they haven't been thinking a lot about that. Yes? Uh, whenever this word fool is brought up, I always think of, uh, of Christ whenever he was telling them about the judgments of God. He says that if you call your, your brother fool, that if you say thou fool. Thou fool, yeah. That that was that was the most harsh thing you could do, not just harsh like like uh, abrasive and and cruel, but it was a it was a, a judgment that that said that that person was valueless. They were a vain yeah. person, uh, just without without any 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 worth to God. And whenever you think about the context of this. If you refuse to walk circumspectly, which we're called to, and you walk as a fool, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. It's as though you're you're emptying your life of what value it would have. Yeah, that's right. Because in the end, what are you going to have? You've kind of hollowed yourself out, so to speak, and made mm -hmm. yourself worthless mm -hmm. to the purposes mm -hmm. of God and to your own benefit. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a lot more serious oh, than man. just yeah. somebody that's joking around and, and doesn't have any appearance of, of being serious about something, which puts a person in a, in a pretty bad yeah. state anyway. If, if a person concentrates on, on that kind of behavior, you're a lot more apt to get your foot in your mouth than if you'll be sober-minded about Amen. your words and stuff. Amen. But uh, it, this is a very serious condition. Not as fools. Don't walk like those who can't see. But they're, yeah. not, not all instructions are equal. Mm -hmm. Some are more weighty than others. Compare this uh, walk circumspectly with uh, if your enemy hunger feed. Yeah, that's right. Amen. They're, they're both good instructions and they should both mm -hmm. be given heed. Mm -hmm. But if your enemy feed him hunger, is like there's just like one layer to it. Mm -hmm. But walk circumspectly mm -hmm. is addressed to mm -hmm. uh, someone who has uh, a heart uh, towards towards the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that, that, that exhortation is like uh, it's like a seed that requires nourishing. So mm -hmm. that the the seed by itself isn't going to do anything. This exhortation just uh, given to the to the path, so to speak, isn't going to do anything. But it take it takes uh, that uh, initiative and inclination towards the things of God, and it will it'll it, that kind of heart will flower this exhortation out mm -hmm. into all every area of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's well said. <clears throat> Amen. Not as fools, but as wise. Now Jesus defined a wise person for us. He said a wise person is a person who hears his sayings, Christ's sayings, and does them. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That was it? He that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man. Amen. Heard what I said, mm -hmm. did what I said. All right? Heard what I said, walked circumspectly. Did what I said, he walked circumspectly. That's a wise. Amen. And what does it say about this wise person? It says, well, he's like a man that built his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. So when the inevitable rains came, and the winds came, the floods came and beat upon the house, yeah. it stood. Yes, amen. That's the result of circumspection. <laughs> when you walk circumspectly, you'll stand upright mm -hmm. in a time of trial. Mm -hmm. It won't shift you. You'll stand. That's walking circumspectly. And as a wise man. A wise man is a person, as Hebrews 5 Four says can discern both can discern both good and evil. Now there are some people that are specialists in evil. I like they can tell you that, but they they're not specialists in good. But you're called to be specialists in both. Be able to discern both good and evil. That is your definition matches God's. <laughs> you're going to be about people who can discern. They're going to be about perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. See, that's living exactly, circumspectly. Mm -hmm. Cleansing ourselves of all filthiness, the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See, that's a, that's, yeah. well, that's quite a word. Let's just put it that way. That's, but that's circumspectly spelled out. They're going to be about setting their affection on things above. They're going to see, <laughs> If I'm going to go to heaven, I know I'm going to have to want to. I'm going to have to want what's there. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start now, holding up, sharpening my appetite for the things of God. And when it comes to treasures, I'm going to lay up for myself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust does not corrupt, the thieves break through and steal. Now I tell you that that's that is the best retirement plan. Yes, amen. <laughs> Some people don't have the privilege of having an earthly retirement plan. I was fortunate enough to to be part of one. Uh, of course, if I just had stayed in uh, full-time ministry, I wouldn't have had it. But but in the kingdom of God, everybody has a good retirement Amen. plan. Amen. But they have to make the investments while you're here. Yeah. How do you lay up treasures in heaven? Well, it's by developing an appetite for what's in heaven. There's a lot of whatever it is, there's a lot. You develop a hefty appetite, you'll be able to have more. See, that's the way it works. Circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In the closing word, redeeming the time. Mm. Now again, this is an extended thought. It, while you're walking circumspectly, Think about this, that you are doing more than fulfilling your duty. Mm -hmm. You're redeeming the time. Some versions say make the most of the time, make good use of it, take advantage of, buy up, bind back, use, make the most of. As it's used here, the word redeem means this, to recover from the power of another. Oh, that's a good thought. Someone else wants, wants your time. Right. Uh -huh. Cover on the power of another, buy up, 
make an investment, buy up for oneself, one's use, make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for doing good, so that zeal and well-doing are, as it were, the purchase money. <laughs> That's Sayer's Greek lexicon, but I thought that was good. <laughs> That uh, zeal and well-doing, that's, that's the coin. Mm -hmm. Make the investment with. Now this is something that can only be done deliberately. A purchase is made, but not with money. An investment will have to be made to get this. You'll have to invest something to, for this to be accomplished. Redeeming of the time. Hmm. Redeeming time, that's a, the time, that's an interesting concept. Some versions read redeeming your time. Others say redeeming every opportunity or their opportunity or your opportunities or every minute or every chance you get. Now, I don't care for the word opportunity here. I prefer the word time. Opportunity seems to suggest that time has an opportunity here and there. See, that, be careful because you, in this gap of time, there may be an opportunity. So I, I think that's too restrictive. I think he's talking about the whole of time, which is your lifetime. Your lifetime. That's what he's redeeming your. This time is filled with infinitely more opportunities than you dare to imagine. But if you're thinking in preconceived idea what an opportunity is, feed the poor. So you look for that. Well, God may give you an opportunity to house the saints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or to speak a word in due season. Mm -hmm. See, there's all so I prefer to think of redeeming the mm -hmm. by the whole of the lot. Invest in the entire lifespan. You shouldn't be limited to doing good. It shouldn't be. There's also time spent running, wrestling, pressing, petitioning God, rendering to Him the fruit of your lips. There's also resisting Satan, denying on God's unworthy lust and crucifying the flesh. See, those are not normally things people think of doing they're not, they're, but see you have in time is filled in with spots where these things can be done and blessed is the man who sees it whatever, whatever God requires you to do in your lifetime there will be a time when it can be done Amen. See? Yeah. But you're going to have to redeem it may be the time when you got scheduled for something else. Yeah. <laughs> Where somebody else scheduled the time. You've got to buy, I'm buying that time back. I, buy, I can see that this is the time i got to do this. Yeah. And then people at Pentecost, they said, men and brethren, as they saw they'd crucified the one they'd been waiting for. They said, what men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, we, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, you receive the Holy gift of the Holy Spirit. And he talked a little bit more and said, and save yourselves from this untoward generation. All right, now they could have said, well, I'm going to go home and think about this because this is a big decision. And I'll let you know tomorrow. That was the time. Right. You want to redeem the time? That was the time. Mm -hmm. And they did it then. And it was successful then, and they received the Holy Spirit then, and they were made one with the body of Christ and entered to the church then. See, why? It was the time. They redeemed the time. I know, I've, re I've uh, reviewed my own life from as far back as I can, can remember. And I've seen opportunities I missed. And I saw other opportunities that God like blocked, mm -hmm. blocked it and managed, managed it because of my state. Mm -hmm. But now I don't want to live so I have to look back and see that type of thing now. Mm -hmm. I want to be circumspect. 
I want to redeem the time. I want to have the ability to say, now is the time to do that. And that's, that's what he means, redeeming the time. You, you see, this is the time for me to do this, and you just you buy the time by taking the investment away from other things and applying it here, and you redeem the... Well, you can see that. That's wonderful. So as I see it, our life is to be viewed as a single time. Lifetime would be a word we'd use. Now, the psalmist, he knew this, and here's what he said. Psalm 89, 47. How short my time is. Yeah. Well, you don't realize this when you're 10 or 12 or 20. You get to be 77, and you're like, oh, how short. And it just seems like I just kind of, I know, just got started here. And at times running out. So I knew what he meant. My, my time. Mm -hmm. Now that was back in the days of relative darkness compared to the bright light now. But our time is relatively short too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so redeeming the time now becomes all the more, mm -hmm. all the more critical. See, my desire, brethren, is not like to impose some kind of rules on people. I know this doesn't work. But I want the capacity to convince people that what God has said can be done. Amen. It's, it's like if this can dawn upon the soul, I can make straight paths for my feet. I got, now I can do what God has told me to do it, so he's going to give me, he has the resources to enable me. Does he said walk circumspectly, all right? I'm going to make. A, I'm going to redeem the time here. I'm going to. I'm going to be more precise about how I live. Yeah, yeah. And God will get. Christ will give thee light. As we said, if you wake up, well, wake, and Christ will give thee light. That's, yeah. Yeah. I said that the uh, do this because the days are evil. Maybe you think that, that means only the days are wicked. The word evil is not confined to that. Mm -hmm. hmm? Let me give you the technical definition of evil. Full of labors, annoyances, hardships, pressed and harassed by labors, bringing toils, annoyances, perils of a time full of peril to Christian faith and steadfastness, calling, causing pain and trouble, bad, of a bad nature or condition, diseased or blind, in an ethical sense, evil, wicked, or bad. See, all of that's evil. And the scripture says, I, the Lord, create evils, Isaiah 45, 7. He doesn't mean moral evil, iniquity. He means calamity evil. Yeah. See, the days are evil, so they're not only filled with sin. They're filled with calamities, yeah. dangers, annoyances like little foxes that spoil the vine, <laughs> distractions, labors that overly exhaust you. This is... These are all, the days are filled with all kind of distractions that will take you away from living exactly. Yeah, see? Right. Mm -hmm. And cause you to live like generally mm -hmm. instead of exactly. The days are evil. Let me, I'll give you my own definition of evil. Evil is whatever's connected with <laughs> death. Whatever death brought in, evil's in that category. It may not appear that way, but to say another way, say whatever is temporal is characterized by this. In other words, you can't let the temporal overshadow the eternal. Amen. And this will be very hard to do if you don't know what the eternal is. <laughs> now that, that, that complicates things quite a bit. Whatever is a consequence of Adam's sin poses a threat. Amen. Even though on the surface it may look innocent. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's not sinful of itself. And it may appear lawful. But if it's connected with, if it's, it can be traced back to Adam's, the imposition of death on Adam, mm -hmm. it constitutes a liability and requires alertness. You've got to be able to discern can I, can't I, should I, 
Should I not? Another way Paul had of saying is this way. He said, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity, the law of sin and death, which is my members. Mm -hmm. He said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Right. What do you mean? I wanted to serve God, but I was tempted instead to commit adultery. Is that what he meant? Well, I, I understand in some cases that could be true, but that's not what he's saying. In this case, what is evil is what keeps you from the good. That's right. Uh -huh. When I would do good, when I would do, not think good, when I would do good, that's circumspectly, living circumspectly. Well, because the days are evil, wisdom is required, see? <laughs> You gotta be wise. You have to know how to navigate. You're going through uh, waters that have icebergs all around, yeah. and only one third of, it, of an iceberg is above the water. Two thirds are beneath the water, and you're navigating through waters that are like that. The rocks, jagged rocks, and icebergs all around. You've got to know how to navigate through the Straits of Magellan. You've got to know how to. But if you're not wise, you can't do that. If you don't have light, you can't live circumspectly like that, see? Yeah. If you're sleeping, you'll crash. Your ship will be hit with disaster. So the Spirit has issued the command, wake up, wake up. Not because a particular crisis is at hand, but because the general circumstance under which you're living requires that you be awake. And then once awake, that's not sufficient, you got to have light. Yeah, and once you have light, that's not sufficient, mm -hmm. you have to walk circumspectly mm -hmm. as wise and not as fools. When this is being done, you can bank on the light coming from Jesus to enable you to Amen. complete the course. I think I'll close there, but it's some wonderful uh, thoughts there. I, I, I regret I didn't develop it more than I did, but it, it's, there's some wonderful things there to see. I have every confidence that as you dwell on it, it'll open up more and more to you, because when it makes sense to be godly, that's what takes the labor and toil out of it, see? <laughs> his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's what makes it light is because you see the issue it's right it's enjoyable and beside that he's in the yoke with you That's right. and the yoke really it's a custom yoke not only for you but for he, for him but he's doing the bulk of the pulling <laughs> yeah any of you have a word you'd like to add tonight yes I was considering when you said that when God has purposed something for you, it will happen sometime in your lifetime. The um, first thing I considered was Brother Simeon from the Bible. The scripture saying it was revealed unto him yeah. by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. I considered that throughout his whole lifetime, he looked forward to the time when he would see Christ. And he was prepared for it. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Amen. He lived very exactly, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, Brother Bob. I was thinking of this um, illustration of a man walking through a minefield blindfolded, <laughs> and yet some would would um, would pass by on the opportunity to have someone who knew where the mines were following behind you, saying, "Go to the left." Now. You say, "Well, I can do it on my own." Go to the left now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it, 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 anybody who insists on operating in their flesh alienates themselves from the grace to do what, That's right. what, what we talked about tonight. It, it, God would he would have his saints to do this right here. To walk to, 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 to not fall asleep. Uh, we're living in an environment that's conducive to sleeping. Sleep. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I mean, and, and if anybody's serious Amen. and with their own heart, they'll know that there's areas where they've been tempted not only to sleep but to stay asleep. Stay say, asleep. Well, but I feel comfortable. Yeah, but you got to wake up. You, you can't get to glory this way. And if you do, then you won't be ready when you get there. Yeah. This, this whole procedure that you talked about tonight enables us, in the end, to be, hear them words, well done. Well, well done. done. You walk circumspectly. Amen. You did it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
No we often talk about how many things we have to do at the same time. <laughs> walking, walking. There's another one. <laughs> yeah, and then redeeming the time. We'll have to rehearse those again and gather up all these that we've been told to do, huh? If, if you take Christ out, it would be, it'd, it'd just be too discouraging That's right. if you take him out. But you put him in, it transforms everything. Amen. The important things um, for redeeming the time is making sure you attend the meetings, uh, not just to attend the meetings, but this is a protection that helps you to stay awake. Mm -hmm. uh, the light is shined so you can see. You, you're able to walk more circumspectly because you, you're more things are revealed. Yeah. It just keeps you awake. You're not you're not um, out doing other things or whatever. You're not away, and, and as much as anytime you're away. You start to snooze. Mm -hmm. Or you can start to snooze. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ricky. Times like money, you only got so much of it and you got to use it to get mm -hmm. the things that you really need. That's you right. Amen. You know, when I was younger and I had a job, I first got a job, I, I, I wasn't very disciplined in my money and there were certain things that I wanted to get that required saving up money. Well, <laughs> we had to go down to 7 Eleven and get a drink. No big deal. It's only a buck. You know, yeah. that's, that's no big deal. And then, of course, we had this come up, and I had this, and all of a sudden, when it came time, I didn't have the money to get what I needed. And I think that's what the wicked one does with that's me right. all the time. That's right. Mm -hmm. that that's right. Watching the surface perspective, you've got to judge this thing that I'm going to give myself to, is it going to keep me from redeeming the time? Because mm -hmm. Satan can get you to live so helter-skelter that oh, I don't have time, yeah. I don't have time. No, you have just as much time as everybody else has. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But if you're not careful, you give your time to all kinds of things, and so you can't you can't redeem the time. Amen. You won't be able to water the camels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you read the scripture with this in mind, it, you know, you'll see. Yeah. Those three, vi vi yes, but they're Levain. Yeah, it this way because so he couldn't put a list of things in there yeah. to do mm -hmm. because right. everybody's list is different yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. the Lord writes things on your heart Amen. Amen. and um, it's just it's it's so convicting and this, this idea of being exact is what the spirit is working out in mm -hmm. you Amen mm -hmm. yeah Amen. That's, that's a good point they need to pull to make it that Everyone's position is not the same. Yeah, that's right. If you've been a persecutor of the church, mm -hmm. this is different than if you've been a Timothy raised face. Yeah, uh -huh. It's different. But the glory is, is worded, yeah. as you say, it's worded so that it fits everybody. Yeah. Amen. And, and effectively. Yeah. Amen. Right. All right. As a Heavenly Father. We thank you for a, a salvation that comes with the resources that enable us to live exactly and circumspectly. And we pray, Lord, we're relying upon you to help us to do this. We, we want to live circumspectly. And we're praying for grace to stay lively and alert and awake so we'll be able to tell the time and then to redeem it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm.